Flooding caused by heavy rain and stiff winds continues to wreak havoc in Australia. Thousands of people are now cut off in the eastern state of New South Wales. Emergency officials say the isolated areas where 20,000 people have been affected are under close watch for help. Prime Minister Julia Gillard has urged the public to avoid fast-moving waters. The natural disaster has so far claimed two lives and caused extensive damage to public and private property. Thousands of houses have also been left without power in several cities. Residents in some coastal towns have been evacuated. Well, to discuss that a bit further, we're now joined by Daniel Pizarro, Press TV's correspondent, who's joining us now on the line from Sydney. Now, Daniel, tell us about the death toll so far from these floods and also tell us about the damage in cities like Sydney. Hi, Wakara. It looks like deja vu all over again. Just weeks after the same areas of the New South Wales coast were battered by severe storms and terrible flooding, we have seen a history repeat itself. So far, we have two people confirmed dead. A man's body was found in a submerged car in the city of Grafton near the New South Wales Queensland border, which was one of the worst places hit last month by the floods. And the 17 year old body of Luke O'Neill in the town of Kew, about 400 kilometres north of Sydney, was discovered yesterday. He was last seen being sucked into a drain while he was looking for golf, golf balls. And uh, he was sucked in. It, a friend of his was also sucked in and he emerged on the other side of the pipe in the dam, but uh, Luke was not found and now his body has been discovered. So it is a, a complete tragedy for someone to have their lives end at such a young age. At the moment, as you said, we have 20,000 uh, people still being isolated by these floods. Some of the worst areas we have include the city of Port Macquarie, just north of Kew, Flooding did go into the city centre. They have receded now, but many low-lying suburbs of Port Macquarie are still isolated, and the rural fire services helicopters are transferring supplies to some of these bad areas up and down the coast. Now, Sydney, we were battered by some of these terrible storms over the past 24 hours. Some of the worst areas was the south and southeast sides of Sydney's metropolitan area. These storms were quite more, but they were very powerful. We're told that they have the power of a Category 3 cyclone, so we've had hundreds of roofs damaged. I was in the city CBD today. I was at the historic Fox movie studios, and one of the big buildings had its roof completely peeled open, and it was splattered all over the floor. Uh, it was just an amazing amount of damage. It was very hard to comprehend. And as I was driving home from Sydney to the Blue Mountains, I actually drove straight through one of these storms. And within the space of about 10 seconds, you could barely see anything in front of you. The rain was terrible. You saw literally the highway become a complete and utter river. It was an amazing amount of power. And then as soon as it happened, it ended. So these storms are very, very small, but they're very, very powerful. And they're continuing to head right, Daniel, I do apologize for having to cut you off, but we'll have to leave it there for now. But of course, we do appreciate appreciate that update. That was Daniel Pizarro, Press TV's correspondent, speaking to us live on the line from Sydney. Well, that's all for the top five. Don't go anywhere. The rest is up next now with Sports International.